Is it better to exercise in the afternoon rather than the morning for blood sugar, insulin, and metabolic health? And is this true for all individuals or those with type 2 diabetes? A new article in the New York Times really got my attention stating exactly this, that people with type 2 diabetes improve their metabolic health better when they exercise in the afternoon rather than the morning. Well, I had to dig into this to find out more. Turns out there's more to the story. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. This is really interesting for me because I'm, I'm always interested in exercise, combining it with nutrition, combining it with, um, with optimal health and metabolic health, and trying to find where sort of that sweet spot is because everybody wants to get the maximum, maximum result for sort of, you know, the minimal effort maybe. I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people do, right? It makes sense. You want to maximize your efficiency. So this article really got my attention. Hmm, is there really something to this? So let's just jump right into the study. The study was published in Physiological Reports, and the title is Exercise Training Elicits Superior Metabolic Effects When Performed in the Afternoon Compared to Morning in Metabolically Compromised Humans. <laughs> All right. So big, long trial, but right, we know it's in people, not rats or mice, it's in humans. We know it's in metabolically compromised people, so people with type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, uh, metabolic syndrome. Uh, and they're saying that exercise training is better when it's done in the afternoon compared to the morning. But here's the problem with this study. It doesn't actually say that. All right. Again, this is a uh, retrospective look at a trial. This was not designed to answer this question. This trial did not randomize people to exercising in the morning or exercising in the afternoon and then see what happened to their metabolic health. In fact, it was the opposite of what the, of the way this trial was designed. And to their credit, they state that in the paper. They say this study was not designed to investigate the effect of the timing of exercise and the reason for subjects performing exercise in the morning or evening was depending on the scheduling possibilities and personal preferences. So this, this was a completely different study that just looked at how people were exercising and its effect on you know, metabolic health and, and NAFLD they also looked at. But they, had, they didn't care when you exercise. But then they thought, hey, let's go back and look at those who exercise in the morning and those who look, exercise in the afternoon and see who did better. So this was purely self-selected. So did the people who exercise in the morning exercise before or after they ate breakfast? Did people in the afternoon exercise after maybe a longer fast between lunch and dinner? Um, did people who exercise in the afternoon um, not eat as much after they exercise, whereas people who exercise in the morning ate more because they had more during the, there are so many different variables, right? Do they, do they eat completely differently? Do they take better care of themselves in different ways, right? It's a, it was just a retrospective look at what people chose to do. So right away, you know, a clear bias about how they chose to exercise in the morning or afternoon. And they limited it only to people who only 100% exercise in the morning or only 100% exercise in the afternoon, not who did like a combination of some, but more in the morning or more in the afternoon. All right, so knowing that weakness, they did conclude that afternoon exercise training improves peripheral insulin sensitivity and glucose homeostasis more profoundly than morning exercise training. So I don't like the way that's stated is those who chose to exercise in the afternoon ended up having better peripheral ins insulin sensitivity and glucose homeostasis. It's not that the exercise itself definitely caused that. So I, I do want to examine this further. I, this study doesn't live up to the, to the hype for sure, but it makes, and it brings up an interesting question, right? Does it make a difference whether you exercise in the morning or the afternoon? And sure, the circadian rhythm of our bodies and our insulin sensitivity circadian rhythm definitely plays into that. And I was fortunate enough to have a podcast interview with Dr. Sachin Panda, who is sort of like the, you could say the godfather of circadian rhythm research. Um, so we know how important circadian rhythm is for all the cells in our body, not just our brain, but all the cells in our body and insulin sensitivity is part of that. But another big component is what is the relationship to food intake, exercising fasting versus exercising after a meal? And what is the what is the makeup of that meal? Is it a high carbohydrate meal or is it a low carbohydrate meal? All of those things are, are key factors. So just to try and pick a timing without looking at those factors is really not looking at the whole picture. But there are a couple other studies which bring up some interesting um, caveats about this. So one was published in uh, Diabetologia in, in 2019. Afternoon exercise is more efficacious than morning exercise at improving blood glucose levels in individuals with type 2 diabetes, a randomized crossover trial. 
So this one was a randomized trial. So I like that part about it right away. So they either did two weeks of morning or afternoon high intensity interval training, followed by a two week washout period, and then flipping to the opposite training. And what they found was looking at blood sugar elevations, that the morning exercise elevated the blood sugar more and it tended to stay a little more elevated throughout the day compared to those who did the high intensity interval training in the afternoon. Now I find this interesting because we know high intensity interval training can and probably should raise your blood sugar level, right? You're, you're mobilizing your blood sugar that you need for energy. And we frequently see, especially people who are low carb, um, we frequently see their biggest spike of the day for their blood sugar can be during their high intensity interval trainings. But usually, it can result in improved blood sugar during the rest of the day, but it didn't show that in these individuals. So were they high carb eaters or were they eating high carb meals the rest of the day? Did they sort of feel like they had to eat more after their morning exercise to refuel or carb up as so often happens? Those are variables I'd like to know about because clinical experience definitely shows in people who are eating a low carb and it doesn't have to be a ketogenic diet, just relatively low carb diet, that the blood sugar can go up and then improve the rest of the day. That's kind of the study I'd really love to see because we have other studies like the one published in Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, also in 2019, titled Lipid Metabolism Links Nutrient Exercise Timing to Insulin Sensitivity in Men Classified as Overweight or Obese. So this one was a randomized crossover trial for six weeks. So the other one was only two weeks. This one was for six weeks. And they looked at exercise either before or after breakfast, which was a, a high carbohydrate breakfast. But they showed that exercising before breakfast improved intramuscular lipid utilization meaning your uh, muscles were able to burn lipids and fat more as opposed to just burning glucose. Now the post-training or post-exercise blood sugar level was not much different, but the post-training insulin sensitivity was better for those who exercised in the fasted state. So their overall insulin levels were lower and their insulin sensitivity scores were low. All right, so I can go on and on with different studies, but I like these three studies because I think they sum up sort of this whole, this whole uh, field. And one is we can't evaluate timing just by time alone because food intake also plays into that, whether it's before or after food intake and type of food intake, high carb versus low carb. So before reacting to this New York Times article or this new study and saying, oh, if you have metabolic dysfunction, you have to exercise in the afternoon, that's not the case. I'd rather see somebody exercise in a fasted state and eat low carb throughout the day without feeling like they have to fuel up or make up for those calories that they burned. That way you can burn more fat, you can deplete your glycogen stores more, um, and that's going to likely improve insulin sensitivity throughout the day. Now, the other thing is exercise when your schedule allows, right? One of the hardest things I found to do is tell people when they should exercise because it has to fit in with your day. Just like the foods you like and your food preparation has to fit with your lifestyle, so does exercise. So if trying to exercise at a specific point of day is going to decrease the amount you exercise, then it's not doing you any good, right? So pick the time that you exercise that's going to work best for you. If you have flexibility and you can do it before you eat, that's great. If you can't, that's okay too. But just remember, you don't have to make up or refuel um, after your exercise to make up for those calories burned because then you might be undoing some of the beneficial metabolic effects. Now, remember also exercise is not the best thing for weight loss, right? That's pretty clear now by science um, that nutrition is number one and exercise is, is much further down, but you get so many other benefits from exercise, whether it's from body composition, whether it's for metabolic health benefits, and we have guides on this, on, on body composition, on exercise, on the different benefits you can get from it because exercise is important for those reasons, all right? So make it a part of your routine. Do it when you can do it, when it's most convenient for you, that you're going to be most compliant with it. And if you can do it before you eat, great. That's my take home from this. Hope this was helpful. If it was, please click a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And you'll see us again here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you.